Hello friends, in today's video I will be critiquing some of my lovely patrons artwork. I recently hit a new milestone and so I had my patrons submit to me some of their artwork that they wanted me to give them advice on. I had asked them to let me know their interests as artists and their goals as well so that it could give them some constructive criticism on the things that they wanted to work on. So before we begin, I want to make a disclaimer and say that these are all just my own opinions and a lot of it really will be personal taste. Art is subjective and there are a million different ways to approach creating artwork and a lot of the times there really isn't a right and wrong way. I will just be addressing the things that these artists have asked me to give them tips on and I'll be showing you guys how I personally would approach these pieces. Also, this video is very long and so I will have timestamps of the different types of critiques I tackle in case you want to skip to certain topics. So with that out of the way, let's begin. So the first artwork submission is by Roselle. I think that you did a beautiful job with these color choices. I love the muted primary color scheme. I think that they complement each other really well. And because you went for something a little bit more muted rather than something super loud, I think it really does portray the sense of serenity that you were hoping for. And I really love the minimal graphic approach. You did such a great job with getting really, really clean, crisp lines and really flat uh, area coverage, especially considering that this is a traditional piece. And I think that this look is definitely reminiscent of Japanese woodblock prints, which is very appropriate and really suits the subject matter that you've got here of the geisha. Okay, so we are going to start out with addressing the mainly the just constructing the portrait and I don't know if Roselle had used a reference photo or not, but that's always my biggest tip on approaching anything that you're looking to improve on with drawing or especially if you are um, not familiar with drawing something or you want to get better at it. And so I went ahead and tried to find a photo reference that would help us get an idea of the angle and just the general feel that we're going for. This was the closest thing I could find, which by the way is a photograph of a Japanese British singer, Rina Sawayama. She's great if you haven't heard of her yet, <laughs> but that's not relevant. I just wanted to say that anyway. So I am going to start out with just approaching how I generally draw photo uh, portraits. So I always start out with a sphere and that's just to map out the skull of the head. And then the thing that we want to keep in mind with drawing portraits is that even though we are drawing two dimensionally, people, the things that we're drawing are three dimensional. And so we have to keep that in mind when you are drawing. And so I place the kind of axis points here and you can see that they are curved as opposed to just straight up and down because we're drawing something that's three dimensional. And so the curve going up and down here is symbolizing the center of the face vertically and then the curved line going horizontally is representing where uh, kind of the halfway point of the face and also where the eyes are going to be. And then from here, I usually just very roughly draw in the jawline and then I begin the nose. I find that the nose is where I want to start first because that's where it kind of helps anchor where the rest of the features are going to go since the nose is in the center of the face. And so I usually place that roughly the halfway point of where I've set the eyes and where the mouth is going to be. Of course, I did not follow my guidelines very well here. So let's just erase that. And so even if, even if you want to, you can kind of roughly map out where the nose and mouth are gonna be as well. We want to be true to life, but also I'm guessing with Roselle's illustration, uh, they want to definitely have a, a level of stylization, of course, because 
as you can kind of see in their original illustration the eyes are definitely bigger I think proportionally and so I want to stay true to that as well and it looks like in Rizal's drawing the mouth is slightly pursed open whereas the reference photo that I found the mouth is entirely closed so again staying true to the original illustration I'm going to have the mouth pursed open a little bit as well and I think that's the great thing or this is a good example of um, putting your own spin on the illustration even if you are using a reference photo because the reference photo is more about just having a launching point not necessarily replicating it exactly as you see it so the next thing to note is the difference I guess here in the cheek so in the reference photo here Rena has a very kind of thin angular face whereas Roselle's face is definitely much fuller and softer and since Roselle had mentioned that uh, they wanted the portrait to feel very feminine and delicate I think it is good to keep that in mind and soften the face here as opposed to going super angular like in the photograph there so now moving on to the kind of focusing in on the eyebrows and the eyelashes here so with Roselle I would say that I think the eyebrows are a bit too low typically at this angle the eyebrows wouldn't quite be touching the eyelid there and so we can see with the picture here of Rena, the eyebrows are definitely a little bit more lifted and so I'm gonna go with that as well and of course the style of eyebrows is entirely up to you I tend to go for kind of thick angular looking eyebrows I will try and kind of try and soften them up a little bit here to try and stay true to the nature of the of Rizal's illustration here and go a little bit softer and for the eyelashes you can kind of see with the photo here with Rena the eyelashes they so this is the lash line here they sort of fan out like so almost like if you're drawing a Sun if you want to you know uh, simplify it whereas with Rizal's here the eyelashes are kind of sometimes coming to meet each other and I think generally uh, eyelashes are more effective when they have a fanning and they just sort of gradually change direction okay so uh, I went ahead and superimposed my portrait sketch onto Roselle's original painting here let me just zoom back in a little bit there we go so there's two different kind of ways I would approach the rest of this so again Roselle really wanted to portray a sense of kind of serenity and uh, kind of a, a delicacy uh, a, about the piece or generally so I definitely think that she has done this with the color choices in the kimono I love that she used a dark blue for the outline rather than a black because I think that helps reinforce the kind of softness and so I think that would have been a nice touch to carry throughout the rest of the piece as opposed to using the gray for the features on the face so first would be to use this peach and so instead of using that uh, gray I think it might be nice to use that peach on the the features there and then we could go with this black for the outlines like in the original here so let me just oops, throw that in so we can see Oh, I guess I should do let me also just do the coloring so we can get a better idea okay so yeah I went ahead and changed any of the 
dark blue elements in the original piece and made them the light blue from the kimono and then made all of the black elements from the original piece to a dark blue and definitely is more of just a preference uh, I definitely do like the black there is a nice contrast in it but I thought that it might be nice to see a, a different colorway since again we're trying to go for something soft and delicate and so I kind of like the having the blue and omitting the black entirely just to make it feel, yeah, just kind of very feminine and delicate. And I think that by having the features on the face, the peach of the kimono instead of the gray, again, it feels warm and still feels soft. So yeah, of course, this is all just my own opinion and feel free to take what you will about my choices. There is no right and wrong. I thought that uh, Roselle definitely had a really great illustration to begin with and this is just my version of it. Next up, we have Holly who painted a self-portrait using gouache and I think you did such a fantastic job. I think it's awesome that you used a, your own reference photo for this piece since like I would mentioned earlier, using reference photos is definitely the key element into learning and improving. And something that I wanna mention that you had mentioned in your email is that oftentimes our cameras are not able to capture the exact colors that we see in real life. And so don't feel bad about having used a filter on your photograph here on your, on your painting because pretty much anyone that is posting their work online is going to have edited in some capacity so that it represents what you actually see in real life to the closest that it could possibly be. And I think it's great that you've added a color block as the background and the additional flowers. I think it's really awesome that you're adding in this these extra elements because it shows that you're adding in your own artistic touch. It really sets it apart from just trying to replicate the photo and it shows off your creativity. Okay, so unlike Roselle's critique, I am going to draw directly on Holly's illustration. And so the first thing I wanted to address that Holly had mentioned in her email was that she felt like the under her eye here, the shadow made it look like she had a black eye. And so I don't have the original reference photo that Holly had taken, but I imagine that there probably is a, sh a dark shadow there and which is why that you had put it in there. So. The way to address that and try to make the reason why it looks like a black eye you in your eyes is because it's the dark one of the darkest places on the skin and so either of course we can lighten that area up and another thing is we can darken other areas that would be in shadow so so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and color drop from the darker areas on the face here and just try and darken some of the other shadows in the piece so that this area here doesn't look so dark in comparison and I think that should help the, the area around that eye not look like a black eye. <laughs> and again, I'm not I'm not able to have your original photo as a reference point. So this is me just guessing based on what is already here. And I think I will go ahead and try and just lighten it a little bit because it does look like there's two light sources. Basically, it looks like and I can see that you made the point to have the light coming from the phone here, which you can see reflected on your face. And then there must be an, an outside source light coming from maybe a window or something like that on the other side. And you definitely did a good job at portraying that since I'm able to tell. So I'm not gonna do too, too much with the skin here. I think we'll leave it at that. And then the next thing I wanted to address was that Holly had said she felt like she wanted her portrait to feel more stylized and less leaning towards realism. And so the thing about stylization, of course, is all personal preference in terms of how you want to stylize something. But for me, stylization is a bit of an exaggeration of what you actually see in real life. 
So the thing that I really like to do with my stylization, the, the key element with portraits for me anyway, is I really like to put an emphasis on the eyes. The eyes are always the main focal point for me when it comes to portraits. And so we're gonna zoom in here a little bit, get into the face here. And so I really like to exaggerate that upper lash line. I'm really into, you know, that kind of heavy makeup glamorous look. And the other thing that I typically do as well is I actually enlarge the eyes too. And again, this is all just personal preference, but that is an element of stylization that I think a lot of people who draw portraits lean towards. And so when we're putting in some more emphasis on the eyes, I also really like putting in eyelashes as well. And of course, Holly does have drawn or has had drawn wow, words, has drawn eyelashes already. Uh, I do like to exaggerate them just slightly. Holly did a really great job here at putting in the little hairs at the beginning. That's something that I always really like to have in my portrait drawings as well. So I'm just filling them out slightly. And so the other thing about my approach of a stylization is also exaggerating the volume of the hair. I'm sure that the reference photo that Holly had used, the hair probably is pretty accurate to what she had drawn, I'm sure. But again, if we're looking into stylization, I don't think it's a bad idea to, you know, add extra volume. And something that I really love doing with hair as well, if it's this, you know, flowy, straight, or slightly wavy hair is I love adding in those extra little hairs, little stray hairs that kind of have gotten away from the, the rest. And I see actually Holly has done this a little bit up here. So I'm just gonna add a few more in there. And then the last thing I wanna tackle is another thing with stylizing that I personally like to do is adding in some line work. And you don't necessarily have to use black if you find that's a little bit too harsh. And you can also gauge it by how you use the color as well in the line art if you want it to be a little bit softer. So I think with the general vibe of Holly's portrait, it does look like she was going for something a little bit softer. So what I'm gonna try and do here is try and keep that softness, but just add in a little bit of line art here and there to just define the features a little bit more. And again, adding in a little bit of that stylization that she was hoping to inject into her piece because that was something that she felt like she wanted to see more in her illustrations. So. And I'm just color picking from the existing illustration or painting here. That way it still feels cohesive. And yeah, of course, uh, stylizing is something that's going to be different for everybody. And it's all about experimenting and just figuring out what works for you and what your preferences are. I think that a lot of the stylization that we as artists end up doing is little bits and pieces of all of our different interests coming into one beast camera thing. <laughs> I don't really know what I'm saying. I'm so distracted. All right. So yeah, so this is my kind of light tweaking, uh, just kind of based off of a little bit of what Holly had said that she wanted to work on. Another thing that she did say she wanted to work on was just at, sh or that she wanted for this piece was she wanted to add more foliage, but I think that is something that is just more about volume and less about um, tweaking. Next up we have Jade and 
I think that you definitely see all of your influences coming together in this piece. I really love that giant mushroom hat. I love the third eye and the overall kind of celestial vibe of the stars and everything. I think that the colors are awesome. I love how vibrant and fun it is. The hot pink colored line art really makes the piece so visually appealing and ties everything together. And overall just definitely drives home your influences of things that are more fantasy and ethereal based. Okay, so for Jade's critique, uh, similar to how I did it with Roselle's, we are going to be kind of redrawing an element. And what I want to tackle is the fact that Jade had said that they wanted to work on their anatomy. And so similar to with Roselle, I'm not sure if there was a reference photo used here in the for the original illustration but again using reference photos really really helps and if you have a very specific pose in mind like we have here and you cannot seem to find it then you can always just take a photo of yourself or of a friend that way you can use it as a launching point and so I went ahead and took this really embarrassing terrible photo from my old MacBook but basically I think that it will help us understand where to draw the arms and especially I think the key element will be the hands. So I tried to find the biggest mug that I own <laughs> to try and mimic what we are having here in this illustration. Of course, there is a level of stylization with Jade's drawing here, especially with the proportion of the body to the head and then the size of this cup. And so I'll definitely be keeping that in mind with this drawing as well. Something I'm realizing, I think with Jade's, of course the head is definitely turned a little bit three quarters. I think her, her intention might've been that the body is turned slightly too and my photograph is definitely straight on. So I do apologize for that little mix up, I think, but I'm gonna go with having the body straight on and then the face will be turned slightly since that's the photo I took here. So you can see I'm just very roughly putting in some shapes for the body. So I like to put in some circles for the where I want the shoulders. And then I just kind of map out a rough torso here. And then I usually just do a light skeleton basically for the arms just so we know the general direction that they're going in and then I do little kind of rectangles for the hands because hands are difficult and I always leave them for last so okay and then from there it's about just mapping out and flushing out the body I'm gonna move All right, so these hands are far from perfect, but will be here forever if I don't just move on. <laughs> so the next thing I want to address is, I think it's really important to have a decent handle on what the body and the form is looking like before you add any clothes onto it. So. 
I guess now we're just gonna throw on some clothes. So right now I'm just trying to superimpose my sketch into Jade's drawing here. And as you can see, I realized that the drawing Jade had done, the handle was on facing one way and the photo reference that I had taken, the handle was facing the other way. And so I went ahead and flipped it because of the way that the hands were positioned. And then I actually ended up enlarging the cup even more because the the way that I had ended up drawing the hands, they weren't, I wanted to make sure the hands were actually almost at least mostly holding onto the cup. And so I just thought I would show you guys that really quick. And so I'm just going to, I'm just going to continue very quickly adding in some color just so we can kind of see the whole picture together. Okay, so I changed the line art to be the same kind of hot pink that Jade had and I very quickly just color picked and tried to map out the colors to be similar to Jade's illustration as well. I didn't do any of the shading or anything like that just for time's sake, but yeah, you can see that uh, it's it's not a huge difference and it still very much captures the essence and the stylization of having the kind of proportionally large head and small petite body. But now I feel like the it looks a little bit more like there's some weight to the mug because I think in Jade's original illustration here, uh, the elf girl, she's, she's just holding the cup by her fingertips. And so, I mean, hey, maybe it's a magically super light cup, but I think realistically it does look like there is some kind of liquid in it. And so there's got some weight to it. And so I think having taken the reference photo, holding an actual mug, and then being able to use that reference photo to draw out the hands. Not perfect, of course, like I said, but in a time crunch, you know, it's, uh, it's an improvement. So. I hope that um, inspires you guys to potentially take your own photographs if you need a very specific pose, even if it's just the hands. I find the hands are always the tough part, but yeah. And moving on to our next submission, this one comes from Justin. I definitely think you can definitely see the influence of drag queens coming through with your piece. I love that glittery makeup and the very angular features. I really uh, i actually really appreciate this kind of graphic nature of the way that you blocked in the hair and the head wrap and the clothing is very flat and i actually think that your line art looks great i think it's very clean and you can see the subtleties in the strokes that taper out in the folds of the head wrap which is a really great detail and overall i think it's just a very stylish piece and you can really see your influences coming through okay so for justin's critique i am going to paint directly on top of their illustration and the main thing i'm going to focus on here i think is shading since that is something that i get a lot of questions about and i think otherwise justin's piece looks great i think that the line art is really clean very concise i love um Pretty much everything about it and I actually I actually really like the kind of light shading on it but if we do want to kind of give it more dimension then that's what we're gonna do today so I went ahead and picked a photograph here that was a similar angle it's not exact I think the portrait here that Justin did the the face is definitely kind of angled down a little bit more but we are at the three-quarter angle and so I think that definitely helps us get an idea of where the highlights and the shadows are going to go. So the biggest thing when shading and doing highlights is being aware of the light source. And so in this photograph here, the light source is, I mean, there, you, there is a little bit of bounce back here just slightly, but the main light source is definitely coming from a little bit in the front from the left side here. And so that's something to keep in mind when addressing the highlights and the shadows. And you can kind of see pretty well in this photograph, you can see that most of the highlights is focused here. And 
then the rest is in varying shadows. And something to keep in mind when you are shading is kind of to look at the fact that there are kind of different planes on the face and as well that like I'd mentioned with drawing the portrait earlier with uh, Rizal's is that the drawing portraits, painting portraits, it's 3D. And so that's definitely something that we got to keep in mind as well. And the other thing is we want to vary the hue. So you can see here if we just color pick. And so you can kind of see, let's open up our wheel here. So the darkest shade here sits there. And then when we color pick here, you can see the hue shifts. So here it's in a much more red family. And then we move here, it's, an, it's getting a little bit cooler and then even cooler. So rather than just, you know, picking the midtone and then picking something darker and lighter, it's good to vary the hue slightly to get that variation and give it a little bit more life to it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is use this color, color pick the base here. And I think for the highlights, we'll go a little bit closer towards the yellow, especially since we've got gold highlights. I think that makes sense. And I'll definitely wanna add in those yellow highlights back the glitter highlight. And so the thing is, or I guess the thing to keep in mind is I am not a strong digital painter, I would say. And so bear with me on probably the blending elements and things like that. But I think with this demonstration, what we'll mostly be focused on is just how to approach where to put the highlights and the shadows. And so basically I'm just using the reference photo here to get an idea of where to place the highlights. And don't worry if, you know, it looks really chunky or whatever. It's, I find it's good to go in a little messy, just block it in and then you can blend and refine later. And especially I think this is the case with using gouache, uh, using acrylics, and especially with digital painting, because you can always go back and refine things later on. Right now, I think it's more about just mapping in the colors and the values. And yeah, I get so many questions about shading and it's very hard to explain. And I definitely don't think I'm an expert. I think that I still have plenty of room to grow, but hopefully this demonstration helps and shows you the importance of using a reference photo. And the more that you do this, the more uh, knowledge you'll build in your brain about how certain light hits the face and you will get better at it and might not always necessarily need a reference photo. So for the darker shades, I'm going to have it lean a little bit more red. And so that's what I mean by changing the hue. We're actually adjusting the color as well as the value. And here we can kind of take artistic liberties. You can kind of see in the photo reference here, there is a little bit of a highlight kind of on the inner corner above the eyelid. I think that the kind of overall face structure that Justin was going for is that the eyes are very like set deeply into the socket where we can kind of see this very deep shadow there. So I'm gonna keep it like that.
And then the next thing I want to talk about is exaggeration. So of course, Justin's piece is very much stylized and I think that it lends itself to just, yeah, pushing the colors even more. And so I like to personally make my, uh, often when I approach my paintings is I like to make the shadows lean a bit cooler and in a much more exaggerated way. So I'm going to see what it looks like if we kind of go for something a little bit more purple, which I don't think is necessarily too crazy since we do have a lot of kind of blues happening in this piece. So let's take a look here. So this definitely feels a little bit too bright, too saturated. So let's see. And like a lot of stuff that I've been doing with these critiques, this is again more of a stylistic choice but i think that it does help bring some interest to the piece sets it apart from just copying a reference photo and helps you know just inject some extra artistic liberties and i think that because of especially the blue in the hair uh, i think having this kind of cool purplish shadow uh, really complements that as well. Even though we are using a reference photo, there is elements to keep in mind when you're painting something that you've added extra elements to. So for example, this strand of hair here. So I want to add in a shadow because keeping in mind the light source that we have in place, it's pretty likely that there would be a shadow cast on the face here from the strand of hair. And I did that as well for the earring here and where the head wrap is as well. Now I'm going to attempt the gold freckling or glittering. Let's see if I can, oh yeah, there we go. It's a bit, that's a bit intense, but let's see. Justin's was definitely much more subtler. <laughs> Again, not digital painting is not my forte, but I couldn't not have this glitter happening or put that glitter back in here. And yeah, I mean, of course, if I were working on this to be a fully completed piece, I would probably spend a little bit more time refining the blending and whatnot on the painting and the skin here but i think that we generally get the idea with hopefully approaching adding the highlights and shadows based on this reference photo that i pulled up here and then adding in those touches of cool shadows and of course this, again, this is all a style choice. I really like how Justin's piece feels a bit more graphic. And I thought that I would just show another side to what could be done with the piece since he did specifically ask about approaching, highlighting and shading. And last but not least, we've got another Holly. <laughs> uh, so I definitely think that you've done a fantastic job with this background, especially since that you said that you're not really familiar with doing backgrounds. You did an amazing job. I absolutely love this concept and character design. I love how her hair turns into the waterfalls around her. And I think that adding the little fish friends, not only having them circle around her puts emphasis on the focal point, but of course, it just gives it a little bit of a narrative and personality. And I think that you really have done a good job with stylizing the rocky cliffs. And I think you simplified it in a way that suits the figure. And I think there's just enough detail to suggest what kind of material it is without over rendering. Cause I know that was something that you wanted to make sure that the stylization was there to suit the figure. And I think you really have done a great job. So with Holly's illustration, the main thing that we want to work on is the background because that's something that she said that she wanted to improve upon. And I think that she's done a great job at building this foundation in this world. What I think could bring it to the, net, the next level is differentiating between the 
the background, the middle ground, and then the foreground. So they all kind of feel very similar, especially the uh, background and the foreground, or sorry, the kind of middle ground. And so I think what will really help is having the background here just fade back a little bit so that the focal point can be our mermaid here. And then I think with the foreground, either we need to put more emphasis on the foreground or get rid of it entirely. So first I want to address the approaching the background here. So what generally is the case is with backgrounds, they are going to be, when things are further away from you, they tend to be a little bit lighter, not as saturated and not quite as sharp. And so to achieve that with your illustrations, you don't necessarily have to spend quite as much time. So you can kind of see with uh, Holly here, she had put the same amount of kind of detailing and approach and rendering to the entire illustration where I feel like this section that I just very sloppily blocked out could have been rendered less. That way it just fades into the background. But since we are here, let's try and reverse engineer this. So let's desaturate a little bit. Let's lighten it up. And then I like to also have things when they're fading into the background because just kind of atmospheric perspective, make it a little bit cooler too. And again, just to differentiate it from the middle ground and foreground. So I know this is a sloppy job, but I think it helps get the point across. <laughs> and then next thing is with the middle ground here, I think we could benefit from creating just a little bit more contrast between the figure and the middle ground here, because we do get the differentiation of color, but if we were to grayscale this, I think they're probably going to be very similar values. Yeah, exactly. And so we want to try and build more contrast in value between our figure and the middle ground here, which will help her stand out more. You can kind of see over here how the darkest points are the shadows in the bushes, the comb, and then in the face. Um, definitely the comb and the face are definitely key and helps draw the viewer to where we want it to go. But I think we could have more contrast throughout her body as well. And I can see that Holly actually had already started. You can kind of see there is some shading happening behind our figure here, but I think we could push that even more. And similar to the critique I had given or talked about with Justin's piece, I think that it is nice to change the hue slightly as well as the value. Oh, and another thing that I nearly forgot to do was I had also meant to blur the background as well, because like I had mentioned, the background tends to be less in focus. So when you're actually doing the illustration, I would say just to render, spend less time rendering, but since we've already have it rendered here, we can just use the blur filter to kind of blur it out a little bit, not too, too much, cause it's probably not that far back. Also want to bring back her little fish friends. And I think I might try and add a little bit more blue to our background as well, just to Really have it fade into the background. Let's see how that looks. And I think bringing in this blue kind of helps 
give the idea or the feel that there's some kind of mist in the air from all these waterfalls. Kind of helps set a mood. I also wanted to address the foreground here. So like I had mentioned earlier, I was saying that either I think we need to have the grass more of a focal point, not a focal point, but more defined of actually drawing in the blades. So you can either, you know, we can either have the blades kind of more obviously placed and what that would do, I think, would kind of give this more, kind of feels like it's more intimate, a little bit cozy, cause it's kind of wrapping around her. Or we can get rid of it altogether and have just the water. And I think what that will do is give the piece more room and I think it will feel a lot more open. So I think that is the route I am going to take here. And then that also gives us more room to add some more of the rippling of the water. So we can see that Holly had already started doing that with right around the tail and the where the falls, the waterfalls meet the body of water, but we can push that even more, especially where the tail is, because I'm sure that it's the tail probably, you know, is moving a little bit and it's creating a ripple effect on the water here. And then as well, where the water meets the cliffs here, which she's done a little bit already. I'm just very quickly mapping this in. Typically, I'd probably find some reference photos. So I know you really wanted, I had said that we really wanted to focus on the background, but I'm just looking at it and I'm trying to find ways to have the mermaid stand out further from the background. And the next thing I think that could help is just adding a little bit more highlight on her figure. And so, again, it's all about the main thing here is that we just want to add more contrast so that she stands out from the background. And then similarly with the hair, we can try and have some of the elements of her hair here a little bit darker. It's just all about creating a clarity. Just want, cause even though we are having a limited color palette here, which is definitely something that I really enjoy, uh, something that really helps an illustration is contrast though, so that we're able to see and differentiate between all the different elements here. And the next maybe, I want to see what it would look like if we changed the hue of the water in her hair from her skin and tail a little bit. Again, just to try and separate the two pieces a little bit. So see what happens when I try to make them a little bit more blue. Okay, so I went ahead and just slightly changed all of the hair and the waterfalls to be a slightly bluer hue and it's very it's a very subtle change but i think it helps again to separate it from the skin and the tail that way there's just a little bit it stands out more but it still keeps the very monochromatic not monochromatic, the minimal color palette uh, that we had going here. So yeah, I think I'm gonna leave it at that. Um, again, Holly had done such a great job already. So I think that the tweaks that I made are very, very subtle. And a lot of it is just kind of based on personal preference, but I hope that 
uh, both Holly and the rest of you guys found it kind of helpful to see my take on tweaking it a little bit. And before we go, I just want to give a huge shout out to all of the patrons who submitted artwork for this video, both the artists who were featured in this video and the ones who I unfortunately didn't get to. You all have great work and I hope that you continue to create and thank you so much for coming along this journey with me and for submitting your fantastic artwork. I'm truly honored to be supported by such a great and fantastic group of uh, fellow artists. And lastly, thank you for watching this video. I hope that my advice can also help you with your artistic endeavors. And most importantly, let's all be kind and respectful to one another and just be reminded that everyone has their own artistic vision. And I always want my channel to be a place of positivity. So let's just keep that going. Anyways, have a great day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.